about a crusher. Yes! Oh! Are you kidding me? And gone! Welcome back to Squared Sports Land Frame Podcast. I'm the host of this podcast, Land Frame. We're now in episode number 30. We're 30 episodes through, and there's a lot to discuss on this action-packed episode. The MLB is heating up. The NBA playoff race is really tight now, heating up so much more. Stay tuned for Squared Sports Land Frame, episode number 30. We'll start with episode number 30, how we always do with our headlines in the NBA. The Lakers beat the Nets without LeBron and without AD. But the Nets, you know, Kyrie Irving got ejected mid-game. James Harden wasn't playing. KD isn't really fully healthy yet. So I give the Nets a pass. I'm not worried, okay? I am not worried in the least. I still am fully confident that the Nets will win the finals. I am. Steph Curry dropped 53 points against the Nuggets. Just wow. I mean... He made 14 shots and had 53 points. 14 made shots, 10 threes, 15 out of 16 made free throws. That is literally superhuman. I've never seen something like that in my life. Steph Curry. That was an insane performance. One of the best performances of the season, no doubt. Top five performances of the season. What a game by Steph Curry and the Nuggets. But at the end of that Nuggets game, Jamal Murray did tear his ACL. Oh, you know, the playoffs are coming around. Jamal Murray, such a good player. It really does suck to see. I'm upset that Jamal Murray tore his ACL. News came out on Tuesday, tore his ACL. And it was only with like 50 seconds left in the game where the game was about to be over. It was 111, 104, 50 seconds remaining. And he, I think he already had a knee injury and then that was adding on to it. And so multiple things. Tore his ACL and Jamal Murray is going to be out for the rest of this season. Half of next season probably will probably return like December of next season, I want to say. But... Uh, Jamal Murray tore his ACL. He's done for the season. Nuggets, they really need him for a deep playoff run. It's going to be tough to see what they can do now. I mean, they probably won't make the Western Conference Finals now. They definitely won't. But the Knicks beat the Lakers. So the Lakers went out. My favorite team, the Knicks. Lakers went out, and they beat the Nets. They beat one of the best teams in the NBA, the Brooklyn Nets, where everyone says it's better than them. But then they proceed to lose, and by a lot, to my New York Knicks. I was so happy. R.J. Barrett clutched the game down up by one, hitting a three. R.J. Barrett has been on fire as of late ever since Anthony Edwards said, yeah, we wanted the ball in R.J. Barrett's hands uh, to shoot that game winner, and he missed it, and we were happy about it. R.J. Barrett, he got mad about it. Kind of, he said, eh, I don't really care about it, but he said, I just laughed. I didn't really care about it. R.J. Barrett been so clutch as of late. Clutched the game, had the dagger against the Grizzlies, had the dagger against the Lakers. R.J. Barrett's doing really well. Julius Randle's heating up again. Turning into like his all-star form. He gets so many points against the Lakers. But I am so happy that my Knicks are doing well. Let's move to the NFL where there is big news. Julian Edelman retired. Wow. I mean, when he got cut by the Patriots, I thought it was just them releasing him like parting ways and he was just going to find a new team. Maybe like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But he's officially done. He basically, you know, he can't play football anymore. He was hurt most of the last season. Ugh, all-time great. Leave in the comment section if you think he's a Hall of Famer. My personal opinion, I think he is a Hall of Famer. I mean, three Super Bowls, three Super Bowls. Am I catches Tom Brady's security blanket for his whole career? Really, really good player, Julian Edelman. I think he deserves a spot in the Hall of Fame. I do. Was a quarterback in college, transitioned to wide receiver in the NFL. What was he, like seventh round pick? Julian Edelman, great NFL career. Sad to see it come to an end, but Julian Edelman has retired. That's about it for the headlines. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Now, top five. Today's top five is my top five NBA players this season. Not all time, not their careers, this season. So basically, my MVP list. You could say. Let's hop into it. Number five, Giannis Antetokounmpo. The reigning MVP. Reigning. He won back-to-back MVPs. Tears, pours. Giannis Antetokounmpo, great player. He's not going to win the MVP this year. He isn't. He's having a good season, though. He's been hurt as of late. I think they can maybe make a run in the playoffs, maybe make the Eastern Conference Finals, you could say. But the Bucks, Giannis Antetokounmpo, fifth best player in the NBA this season. Number four, James Harden. I know he's hurt right now with a hamstring injury, but before that, he's been playing like point guard this year. 26 points a game, 11 assists, 8 rebounds. Just wow. 
transition his game to play with superstars like Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant. He's basically played point guard. Kyrie Irving's basically played shooting guard. This is awesome to see. It really is. James Harden, the fourth best player in the NBA season. Number three, Joel Embiid. You asked me this a couple weeks ago. Oh, Joel Embiid, number one. Number one, no doubt about it. But now, no, no, no. Third best player in the NBA this year. He got hurt. He did. And it's not just the injury. He struggled a bit. He was amazing before the injury. Now he's just great. And he's not as amazing as he was before the injury. He's still playing well, though. Third best player in the NBA this year, Joel Embiid. Number two, Steph Curry. You can debate me on it. He's averaging like 30 points a game this season. Okay. He's the most valuable to his team. If they didn't have him, they would be one of the worst teams in the NBA. Probably the worst team in the NBA, actually. Because last year, they didn't have him. They were the second worst team in the NBA. Yeah. This team. I mean, Steph Curry's been going off this season. He's so valuable to that team. Such a great player this season. Second best player in the NBA this season. Steph Curry. Number one, Nikola Jokic. Wow, wow, wow. This man's playing like a point guard when he's a center. Nikola Jokic, what an amazing season. My pick to win MVP. Congratulations, Nikola Jokic. You were a second-round pick. Now you're about to win MVP. Best player in the NBA this season, in my opinion. Nikola Jokic, you can debate me on it. You can. But that's about for top five. My top five players in the NBA season. Leave your top five players in the NBA this season in the comments. Now, did you know? Today's did you know is, did you know the first NBA three, which we see so much Nowadays, Steph Curry had 10 threes the other night. But did you know the first NBA three wasn't made until 1979, just 42 years ago? The same year Magic Johnson and Larry Bird were rookies. Larry Bird, one of our greatest years ever. The first NBA three wasn't made until his rookie year. Kind of crazy to think about. But did you know the first NBA three wasn't made until 42 years ago by Larry Bird's teammate, actually, on the Celtics? Did you know that? Leave that in the comment section. Now, do do thing. You know how I always rank my top five NFL draft quarterbacks. I've done that a couple times. But let's go big. Let's go top ten. Who I think are the ten best quarterbacks in this year's NFL draft class. Let's hop into it. Number one, I've got Trevor Lawrence, everybody. I do. If you think otherwise, get off of this episode right now. Because Trevor Lawrence is a generational talent. An amazing talent. A star. He's going to be amazing in the NFL. You can't dispute me on that. Best quarterback in this draft class. No debate about it at all. He's going to go number one overall to the Jackson of the Jaguars. He is best quarterback in this draft class. Number one, Trevor Lawrence. Number two, Justin Fields. You're saying, Zach Wilson, where is Zach Wilson? Where is Zach Wilson? I'm a huge Michigan fan. I do not like Justin Fields. Ohio State Justin Fields. And a fellow Justin Fields, I can kind of root for him. This man had an insane pro day. It's okay for me to root for him. I think he is much better than Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson only had like 11 touchdowns, 9 picks last year. Yes, this season he had 33 touchdowns, 3 picks. But Zach Wilson had a really, really bad year last year. This year he was amazing. Last year, don't know. Justin Fields, great quarterback, great quarterback. He had a bit of a rough season this year, but still had a good season. I mean, he made a national championship game. Justin Fields, second best quarterback in this draft class, in my opinion. Number three, Trey Lance. You're saying... Zach Wilson, he's not three either. You can't throw 28 touchdowns, zero interceptions, and run for 14 touchdowns in a pro-style offense and tell me you're not the third best quarterback in this draft class. He threw for 28 touchdowns last season, zero interceptions, 14 rushing touchdowns in a pro-style offense. Trey Lance, the third best quarterback in this draft class. He is. I don't think he fits well with the 49ers. I think Mac Jones fits well with the 49ers. I think, though, he fits amazing with the Lions. I do. Third best quarterback in this draft class. You cannot debate me on that. You can't. Trey Lance, the third best quarterback in this draft class. He is. Number four, Zach Wilson. All right. I've got Zach Wilson. Number four. Not number one. Not number two. Chris Sims has him at number one. I'm thinking, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, no. This guy is not the best quarterback in this draft class. He's the fourth best quarterback in this draft class, in my opinion. He is. The arm talent is there. The fumbles. Too many. The rough season last year. All right. He needs some NFL coaching. He does. I mean, plays at BYU. The best team played all year. Coastal Carolina. Big difference. If you play against Coastal Carolina, that's your best team. Than playing against, like, the Chiefs. The NFL team. The NFL. as your best team. And he didn't play that great against Coastal Carolina. He didn't. 
So, Zach Wilson, fourth best quarterback in this draft class. He is number five. Give me Mac Jones, everybody. Mac Jones, I think he'll go number three to the 49ers. Everyone's saying that would be the worst pick ever. It would be an arrogant pick. It would be like the next Mitch Trubisky. People who say Mac Jones is going to be the next Mitch Trubisky because you say Matt, Mitch Trubisky was the one you're starting. Mac Jones is also a one-year starter. But did Mitch Trubisky win a national championship? No. Okay? Mac Jones won a national championship. Did Mitch Trubisky have no losses his only season start? No. He had like five. Mac Jones is so amazing. So amazing. He's going to strive in the NFL in the 49ers. He is. But fifth best quarterback in this draft class, Mac Jones. Number six, Kellen Mond. I think he could be a great second-day quarterback, second round, third round. Kellen Mond, great quarterback. I used to not like it. I know. I used to, when the first game of the season, they played Vanderbilt. He had a really rough game, and I was like, oh, no, no, no. Putting Haynes King, putting all these other guys. Kellen Mond, not a good quarterback. Kelmon was a four-year starter. If the Washington football team picks him up or the Saints pick him up, what a draft pick that would be. It would. Kelmon. So with some NFL level coaching, he can be an NFL star. Sixth best quarterback in this draft class, in my opinion. Kelmon. Number seven, Davis Mills. You're saying, who is Davis Mills? I don't know who Davis Mills is. He was the number one recruit in that 2016 class. Over to a tongue of Iloa, over Jake Fromm, over guys you see in the NFL now. He got hurt at Stanford. Okay. Didn't have the greatest college career. But he's a good quarterback, Davis Mills. He is. Seventh best quarterback in this draft class, Davis Mills. He can be an NFL starter. I believe that. I do. I hope the Chicago Bears pick the Pittsburgh Steelers. What a pickup that would be. What a draft pick. Davis Mills, the seventh best quarterback in this draft class, in my opinion. Over Kyle Trask. Over other guys. Number seven, Davis Mills. Number eight, I've got Kyle Trask. Okay. Some people think Kyle Trask is amazing. Some people think Kyle Trask is terrible. I'm a bit in the middle. I don't think he's great. I don't think he's terrible. I think he's mediocre. I think he can be a decent backup in the NFL. I don't think he could be a good starter in the NFL. If you want to be a starter, your team won't succeed. Okay? Good quarterback. All right. I used to be so high on Kyle Trask. I used to say he's going to be a top 10 pick. Oh, no, no. Kyle Trask is not going to be a top 10 pick. I do not love Kyle Trask. It was just the system he played in under Dan Mullen. It was Kyle Trask, a good player, good player. But he threw three interceptions on the first three drives in his bowl game. That was best target, Kyle Pitts. I get it, but eighth best quarterback in this draft class, Kyle Trask. Number nine, give me Jamie Newman. You're saying, who's Jamie Newman? Okay, Jamie Newman was a great quarterback at Wake Forest. Last season, really good. He was playing on transferring to Georgia this year, and he did. Then he opted out and decided to clear for the NFL draft. Big, 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 big mistake. He could have been a first-round draft pick if he stayed at Georgia. He could have been. A really, really bad mistake by Jamie Newman, which is making him fall. And he had a really, really bad senior bowl. But Jamie Newman was some good NFL coach. He can be a borderline starter, a good backup. Really, really good backup. Jamie Newman, it's a man of coaching. He could be a good quarterback. I like Jamie Newman. Ninth best quarterback in this draft class. Jamie Newman. Number 10, and the last one, Sam Ellinger. All right. He's got grit. He's a good quarterback. He's going to be a great NFL backup quarterback. Backup quarterback. He doesn't have the tools to be a starter. He's too short, too little. Not the biggest arm. He's fast, I guess, but that's college football stuff like that. Tenth best quarterback in this draft class. Sam Ellinger, he's got grit. He's a good player. Sam Ellinger, 10th best quarterback in this draft class. No debate about it, in my opinion. That's about for my top 10 NFL draft quarterbacks for this year's NFL draft. That is just like two weeks away. Leave your NFL top 10 quarterbacks in this draft class in the comment section. Now, there's a lot of controversy over the best NBA players under 25 years old. So I decide I'll make a list of the best NBA players under 25 years old. Let's get into it. Number one, I've got Luka Doncic. I do, great player, great player. He was the MVP. Favor coming into the season, no longer, but Luka Doncic, great player, the best player under 25 in the association, in the NBA, Luka Doncic. Number two, Devin Booker. Yes, he's 24, about to be 25, but still counts. Devin Booker, great player, great player. He is. Company put him at like 10 on their list. They put LaMelo over him. 
I'm thinking, no, no, no. Devin Booker, second best player in the NBA. Under 25. He is. Number three, Zion Williamson. Showtime. Whoa. They haven't played Plinker against the 76ers. His stats were 37 points, 15 rebounds, 8 assists. I love this by Stan Van Gundy. Because Zion Williamson, you see him, you think center. But he's only 6'6". Six 6'7 foot six. Six foot on a good day. Have him bring up the point. Have him bring the ball up every single time. And you will succeed. Your team will succeed. I love this move by Stan Van Gundy. Have him play point guard. I do. Really, really good player. Really, really good player. Third best player in the NBA under 25 has almost GOAT potential. Zion Williamson. He could be maybe one of the most dynamic players in NBA history. Number three, Zion Williamson. Number four, Jason Tatum. Great player. All-star this season. All-star last year. Great player. Yes, the wheels have fallen off this season a bit for the Celtics. But he's still an amazing player. He is. He and Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown later on this list. But fourth best player under 25, in my opinion, Jason Tatum. Number five, Donovan Mitchell. You're thinking, where is LaMelo Ball? LaMelo Ball's a rookie. Okay. Donovan Mitchell, fifth best player under 25 years old. He had 57 points in a playoff game last year, everybody. Playoff game. Having a really good season this year. He's on the best team in the NBA. And he's the main factor into them being the best team in the NBA, record-wise at least. Not my opinion, but record-wise, they're the best team in the NBA. He's the biggest part of that. Donovan Mitchell. Really, really good player. Great player. Fifth best player under 25 years old in the NBA. Number six, give me LaMelo Ball, everybody. He's showtime also, like Zion Williamson. Next year, he can maybe be an all-star. Great player. I love watching LaMelo Ball. I know he's a broken wrist and all. But next season, he's going to come back healthy. He's going to have a great season. He is. My prediction is he's going to drop 22 points. He will. 22 points per game. Really, really good player, LaMelo Ball. Sixth best player in the NBA. I'm the 25 years old, in my opinion. Number seven, Jalen Brown, everybody. Jalen Brown, an all-star this year. Great player. He is. Really, really good player, Jalen Brown. Seventh best player under 25. He is. Number eight, Brandon Ingram. He was an all-star last year. Wasn't an all-star this year. Close to being an all-star this year, but he wasn't. Zion Williamson was his teammate. Really good player, Brandon Ingram. That trade to New Orleans was such a good change of scenery for him. I love it. Boy, this Pelicans team, Stan Van Gundy, if he can figure things out, they're going to be a top five team in the NBA next year. Next year, not this year. Next year. Number eight, Brandon Ingram. Number nine, Bam Adebayo. I love watching him play. Bam. Plays like a point guard, but he's a center. Such a good player, Bam Adebayo. Such a good player. Ninth best player in the NBA, under 25 years old. So young, so much potential. Number 10 in the last one. Ja Morant, the rookie of the year last year. Reigning rookie of the year. Got hurt a little bit this year. A little bit of a rough, bumpy season this year for the Grizzlies. Rough for him. Good player, though. 10th best player in the NBA, under 25. And I want to give out one honorable mention. Who I would have put at number 11, who I would put at number 12. Number 11, I would have put Jamal Murray. What a season Jamal Murray's had up until this point when he tore his ACL. I feel terrible that he tore his ACL. Jamal Murray, 11th best player in the NBA under 25. And my last one, I would probably put RJ Barrett at number 12. I would. RJ Barrett, such an amazing player. Such an amazing player. He's going to be a star. He might be the next James Harden. He might be. So, that's about for what I think. Top 10 best NBA players under 25 years old. Leave you think in the comment section. Leave your list of who you think the top 10 best NBA players under 25 are. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm going to give you two options. And that's it. Harry Roseman. Listen up. Harry Roseman. General manager of the Philadelphia Eagles. Done an okay job so far. Won a Super Bowl, but terrible drafting. Terrible drafting. Choices. So, I'm going to give you two options, the Eagles. The first one is, you trade up to number four, give up your first round, one of your first round picks next year. You have three, you can give one of them up. Trade up to number four, Falcons get 12, and you take Kyle Pitts at number four. You do. That's your first option. He's literally from Philadelphia, Kyle Pitts. It would be the perfect scenario. People don't realize that he's from Philadelphia, Kyle Pitts. Then, 
in like the third round or something. You take a quarterback just in case Jalen Hurts doesn't pan out. You take like a Davis Mills, Jamie Newman, a Kellen Mond if he's still there. That is your first choice. That's the first option I'm giving you. Harry Roseman in Philadelphia. You trade up the four, get the hometown kid, Cal Pitts, and then you draft a quarterback in the third round. And this is the Jalen Hurts plan. Or you could go with my other plan, which is the plan I like a lot more. The get off the Jalen Hurts train plan. Okay, that plan. You also trade up to four. And the get the Falcons pick, same trade. Give up your first round pick next year. And maybe like a second rounder next year or something. And at that spot, you grab Trey Lance. Good quarterback, great quarterback. Third best quarterback in this draft class, in my opinion. Dynamic. Throw power off the charts. Next Josh Allen, in my opinion. Next Josh Allen. Great player, great player. Trey Lance. You can even compare him to Cam Newton if you want. He's big. Great player. Trey Lance. You move off Jalen Hurts. Maybe you keep him as like a backup or something. Or you ba- make Trey Lance a backup. Make Jalen Hurts a starter for like a season almost. But those are the two options I'm giving you, Harry Roseman. I am. Get Trey Lance or Kyle Pitts. You want, which one do you want? Man. Eagles. You should not stick with Jalen Hurts, in my opinion. You shouldn't. But if the Eagles really want to be contenders in the future, not this season, they're not going to be contenders this season. If they want to like a build a dynasty or something, I think they should do is grab Trey Lance or grab Cal Pitts. One of those. Get the hometown kid, Cal Pitts. Do it. Or go after Trey Lance. Those are the two moves I'm giving you, Eagles. I'd be happy with either, but whew, that's about from Eagles spotlight. What I think the Eagles should do, I'm giving you two choices, Harry Roseman. You gotta take one of them. Which one are you taking? Eagles fans, leave in the comment section which one you would rather. But that's about for Eagles Spotlight this week. Now, around the bases, the MOB is in full swing. So we're bringing back around the bases, everybody. First thing I want to get off my chest, Jacob DeGrom and my New York Mets. What is going on? Francisco Lindor. We trade for you. We gave you $350 million and you're yet to hit a home run. Your average is 100. 100, like 30, 150 or something. If you put 150, you made 150 million, it'd still be 200 million less than your contract. Oh my goodness. Francisco Lindor, your average is terrible this year. The offense isn't great. Pete Alonso and Dominic Smith are like the only home runs we've had this year. Oh no. I'm a New York Mets fan. I want them to succeed. I do. But I don't know if it'll happen. I'm worried Jacob DeGrom is either going to opt out of his contract next season and become a free agent because he has a chance to opt out. Or he's just going to ask for a trade. He's probably going to do one of those. Unless the Mets get him some offense. And they've got him some firepower. They got him Francisco Lindor. They got him James McCann. But those guys aren't producing. They're not. <sighs> Terrible to see as a Mets fan. I really hope they can turn things around. Really do. But let's talk about another thing. A player who the Mets missed out on in the offseason, Trevor Bauer. What in the world is going on Trevor Bauer? He almost had a no-hitter in his first start, and then his baseballs, they say he, like, tampered with them or something weird. What is going on? Is Trevor Bauer cheating or something? I mean, I'm excited to see those results come back. That's just very weird with Trevor Bauer. Here it is. He won the Cy Young last year, but in a very easy division, NL Central. What in the world is going on with Trevor Bauer? What in the world? If he can stay out of trouble or something, then they're going to win the World Series this year, the Dodgers. They are, because he had a great first start. And if they conclude that, like, he didn't tamper with the baseballs or whatever it is in that first start, then he's going to have a great year, and they're going to win the World Series. They are. But let's move to the night team. They're cross town. I was the Los Angeles Angels. Is this their year? They've got Shohei Otani. They've got Mike Trapp. They're 7-3, and three, everybody. They're first in their division. Whew. They're going to have a great year, the Angels. They're going to make the playoffs the second time in Mike Trout's career. They're going to make the playoffs. They are. I'm excited. Mike Trout, you're going to win MVP this year. You were my pick to win MVP this year. Or what? I'm excited to watch more of the Angels, more of Shohei Otani, more of Mike Trout. Is this the year? I think it is. Leave in the comment section if you think it's the Angels' year. But I definitely do. Is this the Phillies' year? They're 6-3 at the time of this recording. Whew. It might be also. Last year, we thought it was going to be their year with Bryce Harper, his second year. No, it wasn't. The year before, we thought it was going to be. No, his former team, the Washington Nationals, the team he left, they won the World Series. 
But is this the year they make the playoffs? They choked at the end of last season. They were about to make it. Then they lost like five out of their last six, something like that. The Philadelphia Phillies. Is this their year? I think it is. Leave in the comment section if you think it's the year. But that's about for Round the Bases this week. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Now, at the buzzer, today's at the buzzer, there's a bit of a hot take. Why I don't like the play tournament, why I hate it, absolutely despise it. A lot of NBA players say they hate it, Draymond Green doesn't like it, a lot of players don't like it, but I've got a different reason. Here's my reason. Okay, so if you're the 10 seed in the play tournament, and you win the game against the 9 seed, and you win the game against the loser of the 7-8 game, you get into the playoffs. But if you're a 10 seed in the Eastern Conference, you're looking at like a top 10 pick, top 5 pick. So we're going to have terrible teams in the playoffs. Say like the Chicago Bulls who are the 10 seed in the East right now. They're in line for like a top 10 pick, top 7 pick. But if they win those two playing games, they're in the playoffs. I do not like this at all. We're going to have bad teams in the playoffs if this happens. We are. Oh my goodness. That's crazy to think about. If the 10 seed beats the 9 seed and they beat the loser of the 8-7 game, they're in the playoffs. Instead of getting a top five pick, top seven pick, top ten pick, whatever it might be. Oh my goodness. This is why I don't like the play in tournament at all. But thanks, play in tournament. So you can give your answer in the comment section. What the play in tournament is, is the seven seed plays the eight seed. And winner of that game gets the seven seed. Okay. The loser of that game has to play the winner of the nine seed versus the ten seed game. Loser of that game, they're eliminated. Nine seed, ten seed game. Whoever loses that game, they're out of it. They're out of the season looking at a lottery pick. But if you win that game, you play the loser of the 7-8 game. And whoever wins that game gets the 8 seed. So say the 10 seed beats the 9 seed and then they beat the loser of the 7-8 game. You're into the playoffs instead of looking at a top 10 pick. You're going to have a bad team in the playoffs. This is why I don't like the playing tournament at all. The NBA. At first, I loved it. It's entertaining. I get it. Entertainment, stuff like that, more basketball. But looking over some things, no, I don't like it at all. Are you opposed to the playing tournament? Or are you for it? Leave that in the comment section. That's about for at the buzzer this week. Now, best for last question. Today's question is, do you think the Lakers can avoid the playing tournament before LeBron and Anthony Davis come back? That's about for the question this week. Question is, do you think the Lakers can avoid the playing tournament before LeBron and Anthony Davis come back. That's bad for Squared Sports. Playing fake episode number 30. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to follow Squared Sports on Instagram at Squared Sports. Don't forget to follow Squared Sports on Twitter at Squared Sport. Follow DB Podcast, the best podcast producers of the game, on Instagram at DB Podcast. And stay tuned for the best sports content in the world.